Another thing I want to mention is that there are broader uh, measures of slack that are also available that are constructed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, by the PLS, that give an even you know, a broader picture of the amount of slack on the labor market and um, that contain also quite inf uh, useful information. So, Um, the standard measure of unemployment the one that we've been discussing is uh, referred to as U3 but there are other measures that encompasses a broader uh, broader type of slack um, and so these measures are called U4 U5 U6 so U4 is U3 plus what we call discouraged workers. And so discouraged workers are workers who uh, want to work, are ready to work, but because they were not able to find a job, they've stopped actively searching. So they didn't search actively in the past four weeks. They searched actively in the past year. And because they didn't search in the past four weeks, they are not counted as unemployed. But nevertheless, you know, you could make the case that these guys are also a manifestation of Slack or you could, and you could also be interested in this uh, discouraged worker. So if you want to look at unemployment, standard measure of unemployment plus discouraged workers, you can look at U4. So there's an even broader measure that's called U5, which includes all of U4 plus um, other marginally attached workers. So these are workers that, the so marginally attached workers are workers who are also ready to work, um, do not have a job, and also have not actively been searching in the past four weeks, but have been actively searching in the past year. So exactly like the discouraged workers. The only difference is that these guys have stopped, ser stopped searching, not for, not for economic reasons, but for other reasons. And so you might be interested also in that measure of Slack. And then there is an even broader measure, which is U6. So U6 includes all of U5 plus workers who are working, but they are working part-time for economic reasons. That is, they are working part-time, although they would like to work full-time, but they have not been able to find a full-time job. So, you know, this is a category of workers who are in between being un unemployed, where you do not work at all, and being employed full-time, where you work the amount of time that you want to work. These guys work, but not the full amount that they would like to work. And again, you can argue that this is a manifestation of Slack. Uh, so if you're interested in this, in this, there is a measure called U6 that captures these um, part-time workers for economic reason. And uh, here is a plot. So th these measures have been collected by the BLS since the 90s. And here is a plot that shows how all these uh, variables move. So the highest one here, this is U6. Then here we have U5, just under U5, we have U4. And then the blue line here is a standard U3, which is the one that we had uh, before. And so the takeaway from this is Qualitatively, of course, all these measures are, are, are moving together. When the standard measure of unemployment U3 goes up, U4, U5, U6 go up. When the standard measure of unemployment goes down, all the other measures go down. So qualitatively, if you want to build a simple model and you only target U3, you know, you're going to, you know, if your model can explain um, why uh, U3 moves in a certain way, certainly a similar model will be able to explain why U4 U5 and U6 move in the same way. Um, quantitatively, what we see is that, so discouraged workers, the U4, you see the tiny, tiny fraction of, um, of the labor force. You can see the gap between the blue line and the red line is very, very small. So here there is really not much, they are, you know, they are essentially the same. Um, U5, if you include all the marginally attached workers, again, there is not a very big difference. Like there is always, um, you know, less than a percentage point. So from a theoretical perspective, you know, there is not all these things just really behave the same. So you can just kind of bundle them 
into one, uh, you know, you could argue that you can bundle them into one big, uh, you know, one big category. And if you're able to explain that, you can kind of explain everything at the same time. Now, U6 is quite different, although it moves in the same direction. You can see that there is a big amount of workers who are part-time for economic reasons. Um, so it, although it's not something we're going to treat in our model, it's something that would be interesting to, to include just because um, roughly, you know, you have as many workers who are part-time for economic reasons as an employed worker. Now, of course, being unemployed is much worse because you don't have a job, you have no income, uh, whereas when you're part-time, well, you have some income and you have a job, which, um, which you know, helps a lot. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a less bad problem, but nevertheless, it would be quite interesting to also try to build a model that captures both um, unemployed and part-time worker. So, before we move on to other forms of Slack, I just want to uh, uh, flag that, of course, in, in this course, I'm going to focus mostly on U.S. data. That's because that's my area of expertise. Um, I've done all my research on U.S. data, so that's what I know. So I'm going to show you U.S. data to illustrate uh, the prevalence of Slack and, and you know, to calibrate our models um, and to calibrate the statistics that we use and, uh, you know, to think about policies. But it's not to say that the, all of what we learn here and the models we build can be applied to other countries. Um, unemployment exists in any country. It's prevalent everywhere. And so um, hopefully everything that we develop here, although it's motivated and based on US data, can be applied to other countries. Just to show you uh, the prevalence of unemployment in other country, uh, here is a nice graph. Uh, that covers all of the OECD countries. And um, the point of the graph is just to show you that unemployment is a problem we have every, everywhere. So here is a graph. It covers um, the 50s to um, today. You have the US, so the time series we've been looking at in pink. And then all the other gray line are all the other OECD countries. And as you can see, you know, it's all over the place. So you have countries that have very low unemployment. You have countries that have very high unemployment. So business cycles are all not synchronized. But as you can see from this cloud, unemployment is just a universal problem. Um, you find unemployment on all labor markets. And that's why it's so important to include it into our micro models and to, um, and, and to study it. Um, and so hopefully, if you're interested in other countries, you can take the tools we develop here and uh, apply them there. 